recording. Recording has started, Jordan. Welcome to our first test for the video podcast. Um, everybody, we have, it's been a long couple of weeks for me. Uh, I've been moving and work has picked up quite a bit. So it is my fault that we have not recorded anything recently. Jordan is blameless in this sense. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, know. Kind of, I feel good about myself. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of see behind me, I've got a bunch of junk that's, uh, in view of the camera but that's not all of it most of that's out of the frame um but yeah we will have a new studio actually this is where i'm going to be setting up um setting up our office and getting sound panels and such up on the walls for recording um but we have reconvened today for a short news corner um really going to be detailing uh jordan's been looking into this quite a bit is the draft leak for the uh roe v wade vote um jordan would you like to quickly summarize what happened earlier this week i think it was this was monday night it was leaked correct uh, yeah yeah we were actually together uh we had finished up bible study and we were sitting on the couch and i looked at my phone and it said breaking um roe v wade overturned it was a little bit misleading because it's not overturned yet so mm -hmm. For those who are unaware of what's going on, let me take you through it. And there are some things, I'm going to explain the situation, but I'm going to explain a little bit of some of the myths that are going around in regards to this opinion. So essentially what happened is, I think earlier this year, there was um, Dobb versus Jackson uh, was a case that was being brought forth. And this case called Roe v. Wade into question. And so what happened essentially is that we were supposed to have a decision on Roe v. Wade like in a few weeks. What ended up happening instead is that someone leaked Alito's opinion draft. Um, and this draft was from, was from February 10th of 2022. Uh, that's what we have we we know one thing for certain that the only people that could have leaked this document would be a judge or um, a clerk. Uh, there is speculation with no evidence to substantiate it yet that it was probably from Sotomayor, uh, who is a more leftist judge. Again, I want to reiterate, there is absolutely no evidence of this. It's just kind of, I guess, when well, I put this in air quotes, educated guess because of how left leaning she is. But with this opinion that was written uh, by Alito, again, this is a draft. This is Dobbs uh, versus Jackson Women's Health Organization. Uh, he, the draft is 98 pages, uh, but I would like to just put out there that the margins are super wide. So it's probably more about 60, 65 pages long, uh, which I've been starting to read through. But essentially, Alito's opinion on this is that Roe v. Wade had no fundamental um, grounding and therefore needed to be overturned. Now, the important thing also to know about this opinion is that it is a majority opinion draft, meaning that at least five were in favor or should be in favor of this vote or even more. Um, I feel like the most it would be would be about six. Um, so here's kind of some of the significance of what's going on. We know just by logic standpoint, the only people that would have any sort of motive to leak this would be more liberal clerks or judges. And that's because Roe v. Wade is being overturned, right? I'm looking, if you see me looking over to the side, the draft is right over here. Cotter's right over there. So, and then you're <laughs> right here. So we're just... It's everywhere. So forgive me. This is all new. It's all new stuff for us. Um, but essentially two things would happen if this draft is leaked. Um, one, what I think the more likely of the two scenarios is that conservative judges are intimidated um, if this draft is leaked out to be intimidated to change their opinion um, because of this. If you haven't noticed the last couple of days, leftists are very up in arms, not just leftists, 
liberals too. Uh, this is actually one area where I am willing to put leftists and liberals into one category. A lot of liberals uh, are fairly pro-choice uh, in nature. So this is a very desperate attempt to intimidate um, these conservative judges to changing their mind, which I actually think was a complete mistake uh, because you have people like Kavanaugh uh, and Barrett who Kavanaugh has been through the ringer. Let's just put yeah, it like well, that. When he, it comes he was went through the ringer just to get instated. Oh yeah, he has been intimidated to no end. I would, if I were him, I would not be a weak noodle. I'd be like, screw you. I'm sticking with this decision no matter what because of the uh, the crap you've put me through. Um, and Barrett, there's no way she's going to end up changing her mind. So in my opinion, I think that if this is, if this is the where the final opinion is heading, I believe that it's probably going to end up making its way um, into law, and it's going to end up getting overturned. Before I let you speak, Connor, and ask questions, there's one, there's one very important thing to understand. Actually, hang on, before I do that, the second option that could happen is that, well, actually, it's the least likely of the options, is that they can codify Roe v. Wade into law, uh, get rid of the filibuster, which is impossible because Mansion and Cinema are still not going to do that for the sake of abortion. They're just not going to do it. It's just not going to happen. So those were the only two likely options for leaking this draft. Now, here's the important thing to note about this opinion um, before I let Connor jump in. In Alito's opinion, he is not saying... There's two things that the left has done. They said, well, if you know the court goes after abortion, they're going to go after same-sex marriage. Um, they're going to go after other issues. In this draft, if you actually use your eyeballs and read what he said, he says that that abortion is a fundamentally different issue from marriage, sex, etc. There's literally a paragraph on this specific topic where he assures people that he is not going to, we're not going to th touch the other things, that this is a very separate issue. That's thing number one to understand about this draft. The second thing that you need to understand about a myth that is being put out is that if Roe v. Wade is overturned, that it will nationally ban abortion. This, unfortunately, for my pro-life self, this is not true. What happens is that Alito is basically saying that we need to restore a federalist system and allow the states to decide individually for themselves um, what they're going to do with abortion, which is actually far more democratic than having the Supreme Court make the law of the land in this case, because it leaves it up to the voters uh, to decide what to do in those areas. So it restores a federalist system. It gives power back to the states uh, to decide what to do. And you're going to have a lot of abortion activists saying that this is going to nationally change things in regards to no state can have abortion. This is not true. New York will still be horrendously allowing abortions to happen. So will California and also infant side, um, which is even more appalling. Um, so you need to keep these things in mind. If anyone puts these things out on you and says that they're going to come after same sex marriage or that um, it's going to ban abortion nationwide, these are not true. If they actually knew how to read, I'm going to get mad here. If they actually did more than read Instagram posts, and actually take the time to read through Alito's draft, they would have a far better understanding of what would happen if Roe v. Wade was overturned. So that is a very quick, 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 and it doesn't feel quick, but that is a quick overview, essentially, of what has happened. And one more thing, I will put it out there very quickly, that regardless of whether or not this was a conservative opinion or a liberal opinion, Anyone who leaks any draft from any judge, whether liberal or conservative, should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It does not matter if they are liberal or conservative. That's my that's my quick, quick take. OK, Connor, go ahead. Uh, all right. So the person that leaked the draft, it's likely to be one of the judges themselves or one of their attendants is, is the sounds of it. 
and it yes, would it would seem that the draft league would be more advantageous for the left, for the liberals, the Democrats, with the idea that now they've got what around two months uh, before the vote actually takes place. They got around two months to start raising hell yeah Um, well that's well that's the thing that a lot of people are starting to say it's like listen if this is at least the draft final opinion get the opinion out there now that this has been leaked they're like just get it out now um and and if you think about it there really is no motivation from the right from any of the right judges to leak this there's absolutely no motive other than to as you said raise hell on themselves um there really is no other motive so it it probably has to come from the left and we will again this is all guessing so we're not saying this is opinion like this is fact it's just a very educated guess uh, hopefully we're gonna know who leaked this in the next um I would hope another day or so we know. Uh, Chief mm-hmm. Justice Roberts has called for an investigation. He's pretty mad about this. Um, for what I know about Roberts, he's not. He's not. He's not quite as conservative as the other judges are. He's a bit more squishy. Um, he was. He was brought in by George Bush, which, if you know George Bush, kind of Republican. Kinda. He kind of mirrors. He kind of mirrors Bush. And then, if you think about the ones that Trump brought into office, like Kavanaugh and Barrett, they're much mm-hmm. more. They're a bit stronger conservatives. Uh, so, Roberts. But regardless, they certainly Roberts seem to be considering to have, what it took for them to get in. I don't recall anybody that Bush elected to be having such a hard time as to as to have accusations, uh, sexual accusations, uh, upon trying to be appointed a judge as Brett Kavanaugh did, or just the amount of horrendous questions that Amy Coney Barrett got um, right. while, while trying to come into to office as well. Um, right. I, I've been trying to think of a conservative motive on this. And like you said, I don't, I don't know that there is one to have leaked this now. There's um, really not. Are, are there any of the conservatives that kind of teeter totter on this issue that we know of? Um, I don't know very much about, Justice Alino, but is it possible that we have somebody who's more bipartisan on this issue and is kind of just wanting to see how the public reacts so that they can be on the favorable side of the vote? That's about the only possibility that I can think of is somebody who just wants to be in the public's good graces. Yeah, I think that that is extremely unlikely that a more squishy judge, sorry, my nose is super itchy, um, that there's a more squishy judge that would take this kind of risk think about it if you're a squishier judge you're just gonna kind of stay in the shadows of being with the majority or with the minority right because think about this this is a historic leak all right no never happened before in the history no no first time no yes this is why it's so egregious is that this has never happened this is never, they have to break confidentiality to do this, right? So no squishy right judge is going to do that. The squishiest one that I can think of would be Roberts, from what I know. Um, again, he is kind of that uh, George Bush Republican type, so he's a bit squishier. Um, this, to break this type of confidentiality, again, I am stating an opinion, that to break this kind of confidentiality, I think it takes a certain level of desperation um, for a decision of this magnitude. If you are a far leftist person who truly believes this ideology, what would you do to make sure that it, it, that it doesn't happen? That this is, I mean, this is 50 years of law. Um, so, not in any offense to you, Connor, I think it's an incredibly weak argument. I don't think that there's any good argument for it. Is it possible? Sure. Um, do I think the other options are more likely? Yes, I do. Um, it could be a clerk. It could be Sotomayor. We don't know. Um, but I'm I'm not thinking I'm not thinking so. I can agree. It is certainly more likely that it is one of the liberal judges or their attendants that that leaked this. Um, I don't know if there's any that really just are testing the waters to see what the public does with it, which of course in the next two months, uh, 
well, get ready for a show. This is this has kind of been one of those gold standard uh, uh one of these gold standards that the left has held dear for so long is that they have Roe v. Wade. They have Roe v. Wade. And to be honest, Republicans have been losing ground ever since that came in. Um, they've been, been trying to roll back the restrictions time and time again. I think we've even seen cases up to up to full term babies. They want to be able to abort at any time within the nine month uh, progress. And Republicans have been losing that ground steadily, which is kind of goes along with the theme of why we just say that they tend to lose. They're losers. Um, this would be one of the first big wins to just have it struck down at the federal level and move back to the states of which there seems right. to be uh, even CNN reporting on it. Of course they're reporting on it, uh, freaking out. There are 13 states that have passed so-called trigger laws. Um, they're ba- mm-hmm. these bans are yep. designed to go into effect if Roe v. Wade is overturned. Mm-hmm. Um, those yep. 13 states that immediately, and I don't know that that means that all of them are going to outright ban it. I'm not going to read through the article. Um, okay. but the states that are either going to outright ban it or severely limit it, I know a lot of them uh, might want to limit down to rape, incest, or if the mother's life uh, is at risk. But Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming all have such trigger bills set up to go into place mm-hmm. if this were to be overturned. Yep. 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 Um, and that's, you brought up something very interesting. Uh, you were talking a, a little bit about um, allowing abortion up to like full term, right? And that's kind of what Alito talks about in this opinion, or at least from what I've read, is that they tried to, def- they couldn't define viability. And so because of that, you could move abortion up uh, to full term, right? They can't define anything. Um, And that was kind of part of the issue. But um, there are some there are some key parts in here um, that I think would be good to read, um, if you don't mind. So from what Alito says, um, he says, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. The Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly, prote- implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the one on which the defenders of Roe and Casey now chiefly rely, the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. That provision has been held to guarantee some rights that are not mentioned in the Constitution, but any such right must be deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition and implicit in the concept of order liberty, according to Washington versus Glucksburg. Um, So that's one of the cases he makes, and he is incredibly scathing in this um, review, by the way, in this opinion. He goes on to say, Rose abuse uh, of judicial authority Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak and the decision had has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing about a, nas- a national settlement of the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. The, per- the permissibility of abortion and the limitations upon it are to be resolved like most important questions in our democracy by citizens trying to persuade one another and then voting. This is what the Constitution and the rule of law demand. Okay. To make a point with that, I cannot stress this enough. If someone comes at you and says that Roe v. Wade is going to nationally ban abortion, you tell them they don't know their stuff and that they're not thinking straight and they clearly can't read. At least they can read, they're just not reading the right things. Because Alito does not mince words here. He says this is what the Constitution and the rule of law demand, that citizens can persuade one another. That is a part of democracy. Mm-hmm. So by by allowing this to happen, we can allow democracy to be a bit better. Now, I am very strongly pro-life. I would like to see abortion banned nationally. That is my hope. That is my dream. But this is still a false, I guess, a false conclusion that they're trying. They're trying to fear monger. Um, right. 
And honestly, it's a false conclusion. And honestly, banning abortion, I don't, I, this is, this among other things are things I personally don't want big daddy government to come in and just like as great as it would be, it, you know, at least for this one to be a win, uh, because I fall into the camp where I would like abortion to be banned. Um, personally, I have a couple of exceptions to it, but overall, I don't think this is, was ever the federal government's choice. It should have been up to the states that are more in tune with their individual population. I would rather win the country over that way um, on the state level than having the government come in and unilaterally, unilaterally deciding what does and doesn't uh, happen in the country. Yeah, uh, I would attend agree to most 99% of what you said, uh, we could have a different debate on which abortions should be legal, which in my case, I would say none. Um, but a lot of, and to talk a little bit about the response to this, I spent a little bit of time actually while Cotter, while you were getting set up for us to record, I was scrolling on Instagram and yes, I was looking at cute puppy videos, but also I was looking at people's stories, um, so that I could see, what people were saying mm -hmm. and a lot of them use a lot of false conclusions um i saw a lot of people every argument that they made ignored the baby entirely it always remember what they do with these arguments is they always look at the mother and they say what about this what about this what about that what about her career what about and you're just like stop 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 does any of that constitute murdering a child does any of it you have to ask that fundamental question you have to ask them is this worth a child's life and they have to be able to answer that question um and we are past the point the the whole argument of a baby being a cluster of cells is bs it is so outdated and honestly, if anyone who said that they were knowledgeable, this is important, that if they say that they're knowledgeable about the topic and they understand it and they say that a baby in the womb is a, cl is a cluster of cells, I would call them ignorant straight to their face and tell them that they don't know what they're talking about because science has completely disproved that. That is a child in the womb. And, they, and the left at this point, they know it. They absolutely know it because think about it. They went from you know, safe, legal, and rare to, heck yeah, we're killing kids. What are you going to do about it? Like, they have become so open now about their motive. Um, so I've seen, I've seen a lot of them talking about the woman. Uh, under that is the whole my body, my choice, which is hilarious because, again, there's, it's, it's two bodies. It's the mom's body mm -hmm. and it's the baby's body. Yeah, and in that scenario, they allow the mother to, decide for the baby who can't decide for himself and it's funny because uh what but six months ago not even they were advocating that everybody has to go get a vaccine and we we beat that horse to death um but it, it seems that it only the, the my body my choice thing only applies when they want it to and never when they don't want it to well they keep changing the rules like you know on one hand they claim that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man and then when it comes back to roe v wade they're like if you don't have a uterus you don't have an opinion but it's like wait a minute can't a man be a woman if a man can be a woman then he can be a woman without a uterus like this doesn't make any sense like they can't yeah or, or if the woman can elect to have an abortion but then if she decides to have the kid then the man has to pay child support uh it's another logical inconsistency i find if she can choose to terminate a baby then he can choose to not have anything to do with it once the once the baby is grown um so the fact that they force the men into paying for it uh for the rest of their lives or at least until the kid is out of the house i just it it boggles my mind that they give so much power in this area to the woman granted the woman is carrying the baby for nine months that is not an easy feat whatsoever but Nine months versus having the guy pay for the kid until they're like what, 21? 18? 18 Something at least. Like that. That's eight, 18 years versus nine months. Yeah, I was about, I was going to say something to that effect. Um, 
you're, we're talking about all these issues of, okay, you know, should the man pay? Should this happen? And there's some people on the right that would say, you know, have safe sex, you know, understand the risks, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go even further than that. And I'm going to make it a truly conservative call for all the people that just hate on religion, that say religion has ruined everything. Take a look at what's happened. The removal of religion causes these kind of things. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Religion is something that values the nuclear family and sees it as something that's incredibly important and sees that the start of a nuclear family, which is a marriage, is sacred. When you go outside of the sacredness of marriage, it does not just affect you. It affects everyone around us it does aristotle in his book politics he talks about how every society the root of every society are nuclear families that's really really important um and it's the start of how we build a society and how we even have politics in the first place um so when you have sex outside of marriage when you decide to do these things these kind of things happen. It has a large trickle effect. And you say, Jordan, what about rape? Uh, what about, uh, you know, I guess, in rape and incest? That is also a horrible, 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 horrible effect of sin and someone doing something absolutely egregious to someone else and violating them. That's horrible, too. And at the end of that, always, it's does the baby get punished for that? They, they they couldn't do anything about it. You know, what do you do then? Um, and I think from an emotional level, I'm admitting that this is emotional. So if you're like, Jordan, that's an emotional argument. Yeah, it is. Um, I get far more inspired when I hear a lot of stories of of moms that are like, I was raped or this happened. And it's very rare, by the way. Um, it's it's very, very rare, um, but that they chose to keep their kid and they're doing incredible stuff that no one would have ever thought because um, that life had value no matter how it was made. It had value and them living proved that um, and that was incredible in itself. So those stories are always going to be far more inspiring than the ones where those babies, unfortunately, um, are killed. It's certainly an emotional, an emotional discussion and topic. And uh, just well, I wanted to go and look and scroll through Twitter here and see what all might be going on there. Um, there's a lot of stuff, but in in the midst of it, you know, there there are the difficult stories. And, and this is the one; these are the ones specifically that are hard for me. Is when you have a mother whose life is in danger because of something going on with the pregnancy. Now, for me. I'm not going to say that abortion is the is the right option there. I would leave that up to the choice of the mother and the father who are responsible for this baby. That being said, if it's determined that they want to remove the baby, then everything should be done to try and keep that baby alive, not eviscerated into pieces um, or or left out to die on the countertop, as we've seen in in videos leaked by Veritas and and numerous other groups out there that have been trying to expose Planned Parenthoods and just the entire procedure of abortion altogether. Um, the, there's tons of specifics we could get into here, but I think I have one other particular question for you. I've seen it discussed on a couple of other podcasts um, and newsrooms. This is a contention between the right and the left over a of over for the for the right a morality issue for the left a freedom issue um ultimately a lot of people have started comparing this to the civil war breaking out over slavery and we know that things have been at a at a height intensity uh, ever since pre 2016 uh, that really shot through the roof uh with the with the election between Trump and Hillary and just how divisive the sides have gotten. And we noted earlier that the right, ever since losing Roe v. Wade, uh, what, 50-something years ago? Yeah, it's going to be about 50. So, um, so, somewhere 1973. around there. Mm -hmm. 1973 was when it oh, came out. So, 
just about 50 years ago, the right lost us, and they've been losing it all along since. This is a huge jump from more recent measures where the left is trying to get the full term, full term abortion, and here we're about to have it overturned at the federal level. So it's looking like the right, the conservatives have come out stronger against this than they ever have in the past, and they've actually gained a lot of ground. Meanwhile, the left has been mm-hmm. pushing to continue escalating you know, how far they can take it. With tensions this high, what do you think about the ideas that have been thrown around about a civil war? Yeah, I think it's an interesting theory. Um, I So I'm going to isolate this issue specifically. I think you're asking... Is this going to be the tipping point? Is this going to be what makes a civil war happen? Yeah, this and we don't specific... we don't know what the civil war would look like. I I, I don't sure. think it will. It, it certainly can't mm-hmm. be defined by the north and south again, or even the east and west. There's just yeah, we're too mixed for that. But some form mm-hmm. of a civil war. Don't know what it looks like in the modern era. But do you you know in your opinion, seeing this could it potentially be a catalyst that leads to some sort of infighting for Americans. I don't think that Roe v. Wade will be, no. I don't think it'll be Roe v. Wade. And the reason why I don't think Roe v. Wade will is that while I think that this is going to cause a lot of heat in the moment, I think because you're delegating to states, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to start to see red states get redder and Blue states get bluer, and then there's going to be some states that are a little bit on the edge and that are going to have to be fought for a little bit. Um, And so you're going to end up, yes, you are going to end up seeing the country separate, but there's a difference between it separating and then there being a civil war. Um, So I think that the country is going to definitely separate. Um, I think that you're going to see people that um, are more pro-life flocking to more pro-life states because why you want to go to places where you have um, shared values like having a community of people Mm -hmm. that share the same values and then you're going to have people that like abortion and you know like crime rampant in their cities they're going to have them um you know go over to bluer states um if that's what you prefer you can go there now i think I have toyed with the idea of somewhat of a level of a civil cold war um, in regards to like, maybe that's what it would look like today. Um, But the biggest reason why I don't know if there's going to be a full civil war um, is I'm, I'm not sure if we're there yet. Um, And I think there are still governors and elected officials that understand that if you that if you have a civil war um, in your country, that it's definitely going to weaken us on a world stage. This is just my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think that it's that if we're fighting with each other, um, we're not going to be able to fight outside, which is already happening to an extent where we are so focused on certain issues. Think about the way the reason that Biden got elected in the first place is because we were so busy thinking about race and you know, transing children, you know, (laughs) like, and then we just didn't think about China, like, oh, China, we forgot about them. And oh, Russia, we forgot about them. And so that's part of why the world's imploded a little bit. It's just, it's crazy. Um, So I think we're already, I don't think that, I don't think that Roe v. Wade would be a catalyst. This is just my opinion. I could honestly be completely wrong. It's very, very possible. Um, I think what will probably be more of the catalyst, I feel a storm brewing with transgenderism specifically because I think people are starting to realize what it is. And I think um, the more we can get detransitioners out there telling their story, I think it's going to be really helpful. And we're also because transgenderism has had enough time to take effect. uh, We have enough teenagers or young adults that have found out how horrible the effects of detrain or of transitioning is. Um, and now we have some more scientific data to look at. Um, so I think ultimately, I think it's going to be transgenderism. That's really going to take, that's really going to help separate people even more. I don't know which I know you kind of think that it, it could go towards a civil war if uh, I, I, think, I remember I think we've got correctly. just a long list of things that are just 
been mounting pressure at this point. Abortion right now, because it's recent, sits at the top of trans- transgenderism, sex education in schools, free speech. All of these things just keep mounting up, and the differences couldn't be more clear than night and day at this point with how the left and the right thinks in regards to these things. And my heart's out to to <laughs> to all the independents out there that just are kind of caught in the middle of all of this um, without a party that's that large. They're just brewing. Just they're just brewing not, tea right now and just watching. Yeah, they're just, they're just sitting back watching um, to see where yeah. this goes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that uh, gun rights. You can you can you can keep going with that list. It just keeps mounting and mounting, and at some point, it's going to get too heavy and collapse. What that looks like when we get to that point. I don't know, um, but this is certainly, I, I keep looking at it like it's almost like a, a Jenga tower, and they each take a turn sliding a brick out and putting it on top, and at some point, things are just going to go absolutely crazy. Um, like I said, yeah. I don't know if this is it, but considering since it has been nonstop since 2016, and here we are uh, six years later, it, it's been it, there's been like a central theme every single year. <laughs> I just, I, yeah. I don't know how it ends. Yeah, I don't know either. The one thing I will say is I don't know how many people are as pro-choice as we think. Um, I don't think there's as many people that are would be for a full-term abortion. Um, I think I that, can definitely uh, see some people that are in the middle. Yeah, I think so. Tim Pool has been hitting on this one quite a bit, uh, along with a bunch of his guests talking about uh, the left tend the liberals tend to quote that seventy percent of people are are pro abortion. What they don't make the distinction is to what degree are they pro abortion. Um, and it yeah. seems to be the case that most of them are for abortion with restrictions. Which for anybody that wants unrestricted abortion, it, they're not on your side. Uh, they they want restrictions over the scenarios of the pregnancy. Right. They want they want restrictions on at what point or what method. Um, so it, it'll be an interesting thing to see what plays out in the next few months, and we will certainly be covering it more uh, as it comes. Please be praying for the safety of all of the judges because uh, God knows we've got crazy people on the left and the right um, who who will, who will have lashed out about this stuff before. We've seen... We've seen uh, Silent protests from the conservatives get assaulted by people. And in the past, we've seen abortion centers set on fire. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that it, while we do believe that what these people are doing is evil, uh, enacting violence is not the solution um, in yep. this case. It's it, committing evil against evil is just, it, it's just going to lead to more of it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Um, you know, some action points, you know, would be, I mean, first and foremost, prayer. I mean, I can't help but think that even the possibility of Roe v. Wade being overturned has a lot to do with religious Christians praying um, and being outside of those abortion cliques. I think we're seeing the fruits of their labor, um, in my honest opinion. Um, You know, but the second thing that you can do um, is really understand what Roe v. Wade is and you know, if you see these kind of arguments that are out there, you know, confront people with the truth and be like, hey, I know that you think that Roe v. Wade does this, but it actually does that. Um, And then secondly, too, you always have to bring it back to the kid. You always bring it back to the baby that's in the womb. It's the one fact It's the key fact that when I look through all these Instagram posts, when I look at all these politicians losing their brains, they forget about the baby. They don't want to talk about the baby. And if you talk about the baby, they will go berserk because it's the truth. Um, And there is something demonic with abortion. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind to I have watched it has crushed me to watch people that call themselves Christians defend abortion. Um, it breaks my heart, um, because I don't, in my own view, I I don't know if you can support abortion and call yourself 
a Christian, a devout Christian. Um, so I'd say that a lot of cultural Christians have defended abortion because they have been so pulled in uh, by culture. Uh, it's demonic. Uh, it's it's really hard to watch. But we will have more updates on this. I have a lot more. <laughs> I have a lot more thoughts that I'd love to talk with Connor about in person because it's a lot more fun in person, but we did want to get something out there. We have this giant duck logo on the very <laughs> top of my head. We're trying out new services. We're deciding which one we like. When we find the one that we like, we will get rid of that advertising so that we can yeah. do whatever we uh, want. Shout out, shout out to StreamYard so far. Uh, this communication has actually been pretty flawless. We tried uh, two or three um, other services plus just trying to get together our own, but the audio didn't sound good. But compared to the other services, at least live, um, this is really clear communication. Uh, the camera quality is good. Hopefully the recording turns out to be just as good, but this will be great for us to be able to upload some more clips and snippets to, to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and hey, maybe even Twitter these days because Twitter's under new management. And That's I'm right. interested to see what happens. It doesn't mean I'm staying on it because it's still currently a cesspool. It's Not still, quite as bad as TikTok, but... Yeah. <laughs> it's still garbage. But I tell you what, when we get back in person, we need to be doing like a full full news corner episode on Elon Musk, uh, Roe v. Wade. We have to talk about it because this, honestly, everyone's like the culture is bleak and, you know, it is to an extent for sure. Uh, we're going to have a recession coming up, but hey, we have some great wins. We have some good wins uh, and they're worth talking about. And Elon Musk is hilarious. Um, he's not, a, he's not a conservative by any means, uh, but he is hilarious. He is we a do enjoy libertarian a through and through, I would say. Yeah, I would probably say so. And he, he supports free speech. I'm mm -hmm. for that. Good with me, but, um, I think that's it for me for right now. No, well, that's it for me. We will see you guys for the next podcast. Might be some more video ones coming your way. Uh, Either way, we will talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. Have a All good right. one, Jordan. Yep.